What's up guys? It's me, Noah Galutin, and I am standing in an actual live human kitchen, not a green screen room. See, we did some videos before where you guys saw me make salad dressing and you, for whatever reason, seemed to enjoy that. So now I want to show you some more things that you could buy at a supermarket, but you shouldn't because it's stupid and you can make it yourself and it's cheaper and there's no like weird additives and crap in it. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make salsa. All right, so first up, I'm gonna make a classic salsa mexicana, real simple, nothing to it. Tomatoes, white onions, cilantro, salt, and occasionally lime juice, depending on whether you need it or not, based on the acidity of the tomato. So the first thing you wanna do is take your knife and use it to cut a tomato. This is a very important part. Now, don't worry if your knife skills suck. In fact, I'll do a crappy job just to show you that it doesn't matter. So just take your tomato, take this little stemmy stupid thing off because nobody wants a stemmy stupid thing in their tomatoes and then basically all you're doing is just chopping up tomatoes you can be rustic as hell with it remember what i said whenever something looks ugly you just say that it's rustic chop the hell out of them you want to avoid your fingers unless that's your thing and uh just chop the crap out of your tomatoes you're looking at probably making somewhere in the neighborhood of like two cups but to be honest it's just cooking you just throw things together you taste it if it doesn't taste salty enough you add more salt if you want more onion you add more onion here you go, nice and chopped up. You take your tomatoes with all the juice and you put it in a bowl. Now, got your tomatoes, you wanna take some white onion. White onion is critical, it's pretty classic for Mexican cooking. Has sort of a nice, sort of bright, sharp flavor that you want. And for this one, you're again chopping it up pretty goddamn fine. Maybe about that much. We got a quarter of an onion for what I'm doing here. But again, do whatever the hell you feel like. Taste it, modify it. Look, super rustic, don't even worry about it. One hand, just around just a fine fine chop we're not doing a french cooking school if you can just basically cook food for people have a glass of wine take a nap wake up cook some more food and just make everything look rustic as fuck. in fact this cooking segment should be called rustic as fuck. is it too late to make that called rustic as fuck? this is actually a little more than i want to use i'm going to start with this just throw that right in there put it in boom you got tomatoes you got onions now let's take some cilantro I'll give you guys measurements that make sense in the description box. I'll give you guys uh, quantities that make sense. Now again, we're just chopping these up. These you can be a little rougher with. You don't need to get as fine with your cilantro. All right, nice and rough. Throw that in there. And then you're gonna want some heat. Now, people in the US seem to really like using jalapenos for everything, but serranos are sort of the better one for sort of general cooking. You can char them. You can chop them up raw. They're just a nice, flavorful guy. They're a little spicier than jalapenos, though it really all varies a lot. And if you want to, if you have a, like a vagina for a palate, you might want to take the seeds out. But uh, I don't care about the people around me, whether it's gonna be too spicy. So I'm gonna make it really spicy and use three whole serranos. You're kind of going pretty fine, pretty rustic. It's gonna all mix together. You want every bite to kind of taste like everything. So now we got some nice chopped ass up serranos. You got that, now salt. Be nice and aggressive, throw your salt in there and then uh, just mix it all together. Uh, I'm using um, a tool I call um, my hands. Use it for lots of things. You can use it for cooking, fighting, masturbating, masturbating other people. It's, uh, it's great, it's one of the best tools in your kitchen. So now you're gonna taste this for seasoning. That's really spicy, needs more salt. Now these tomatoes are not the best tomatoes in the world. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lime juice because it'll give it a little extra acidity. Boom. And remember, salt and acid are two things that people sort of forget. If you, they sometimes they'll keep adding salt to something when in reality what it really wants is a little bit of acid. Yeah. It tastes like salsa. There you go. Super easy. Tomatoes, onions, cilantro, lemon juice, salt, serranos. You got salsa. All right, so you've seen a red salsa. You've probably seen green salsa before. And the way you make a green salsa is with a little thing called a tomatillo. Now a tomatillo, they have this kind of husky thing around them. And all you gotta do is take it off. Real easy. You take the husk off, you wanna maybe wash it just cause it kind of has a little bit of a sticky thing to it. All right, so now that our tomatillos are husked and rinsed, typically what I would do is uh, brown them on a comal or like a flat top or a griddle like you'd make pancakes on. But since most of you guys probably don't have that at home, 
Uh, I'm gonna show you another way you can do it is just to do it under the broiler. What you're really trying to do is just kind of blister the skin a little bit, give it some color, it softens them up, and then you're gonna blend them later into a salsa. So for our tomatillo salsa, instead of serranos as our heat source, we're using these dried red chilies de arbol. What you wanna do with these is toast them first before you cook with them. So it kind of brings out the aroma and the flavor. Just don't toast them for too long or else they burn and turn bitter and ruin your salsa. So you can do this a lot of ways. You can throw them in a the toaster oven, you can put them in a regular oven, you can do it on a griddle, on the stove, in a pan. Since we already have the broiler going for our tomatillos, I'm gonna throw these in there with them, but just for again, for a couple seconds, get the smell out take them out. All right, so see how these ones here, which have not been toasted yet, are kind of pliable, and they crumble a little bit, and then these ones, which I just toasted, they kind of break a little more, and they sound cooler. So you don't want the stems, you just want to take these guys, just kind of break them up a little bit into your blender. If you were to blend these all together with the tomatillos and everything, you'd get like big chunks of uh, arbol skin, which you don't want, it's kind of tough and chewy. So you want to blend these guys first, and that way uh, they'll really break apart into like a fine powder. So again, this is to taste its spiciness, so use as much as you want. We're using about eight chilies de arbol in this situation, but again, they vary in size, so you know, eyeball it. If it tastes too spicy, add more tomatillos later. Tomatillos are really acidic too, so it kind of balances out when you have some heat with the tomatillos. All right, that should be good. Now we should be able to add in our tomatillos and everything else and be ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is take my clove of garlic, smash it with the side of my knife, and that guy can go right into your blender. Your tomatillos are gonna take probably about five minutes, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter in the broiler. What you're looking for is color. You wanna get a little bit of brown, a little bit of blackness, and uh, just some of it on there, a little char. You make sure to flip them, get color as much all over the tomatillos as you can. All right, so these guys aren't totally, totally perfect. If you get them on a flat top, it'd be a little more even, but basically what you're getting is a little bit of color, a little charring. They got a little darker, that means they're cooked. They're basically good to go. So now you can take these guys, throw them in here too. Now don't worry about your, uh, your weird little butthole stem things on tomatillos. Those are fine, you're blending it, doesn't really matter. You wanna take up some salt, salt is your friend. Don't be afraid of salt. It's the difference between stupid food and good food. And then because tomatillos are so dense and so thick as a juice, you wanna add a little bit of water, just a splash. Again, you can add more later. All right, how easy was that? It smells hot. That is spicy. I'm gonna put a little more salt, a little more water in, it's a little thick. Don't be afraid of your salt in this. Again, this is very acidic and very spicy. Splash of water. And then again, like, you're cooking. Feel free to fuck around, throw in some cilantro, throw in some lime juice, you know, throw in whatever the hell you feel like. And if it tastes good to you, then congratulations, you made food. Let's try it now. A great trick with this too, if you have a smoker at home, uh, or a, if you happen to run a Texas style barbecue restaurant, Smoking tomatillos is awesome for a salsa. Yeah, tomatillo salsa. We got a green salsa, we got a red salsa. Both super fast, super easy. Also, you can't even buy this shit in stores. Or if you can, it's in like a weird Taco Bell flavor pack like filled with like cornstarch and like baby semen or something. Now you got your uh, salsa verde with chili de arbol. I'm just gonna pour it into this bowl for easy scooping. And now, Look at this. You got a green salsa and you got a red salsa. All right, so now we're gonna do that thing they do on food shows at the end of the episode where they eat the food that they talked about and then they go, mmm, that's delicious. I know I said that last time for those of you who are super fans, but uh, let's, let's see what happens. Oh, that, that tastes exactly like salsa. And this guy is our green guy with little red flecks in it. You did pretty good work here today, guys. Thanks for all your help. I couldn't have done it without you. Just kidding, I did it all by myself. How easy was that? I made salsa, I made two salsas. In the time it took you to text a picture to your wife and go, is this a salsa we like? You could have made salsa. There you go. That's it for us today, guys. I'm Noah Galutin. Subscribe to Taste It, hit the thumbs up, and let us know if you want to see more cooking segments. And if you like it, then who knows? Maybe in nine months we'll do another one.